What's going on, Warriors? It's Coach Jay. Listen to my Pure Muscle again. You guys already know I'm here all the time. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how you guys can burn some body fat. If you're diabetic, you feel like you've hit a plateau, you feel like you're struggling when it comes to burning body fat, this video is gonna help iron things out for you so you guys know exactly what you guys need to do to burn body fat. If it's your first time on the channel, I help diabetics to burn body fat, manage their blood sugars, and build muscle. I also help you in terms of understanding what supplements to bring in to help you in terms of thriving with managing your blood sugars, building muscle, and burning body fat. So if that sounds good, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button down below. Make sure you guys hit that bell notification and hit that like button. This helps me get these videos out to you guys. So the first reason is that you're not tracking calories, and I'm gonna extend on that, that your calories when you do track are either too high or they're too low. Not knowing where your calories are to burn body fat can be like walking through a home where you don't know where the different rooms are. At the end of the day, you end up kind of getting to the top of the steps of the basement and falling down and busting your head up on the floor because you have no idea what the layout is of the home that you're in. And it's the same thing with the calories that we take in because calories are important for the body's energy. And so if your calories are too low or your calories are too high, you're not going to hit what you want to hit in terms of burning body fat. It could be the reason why you're struggling to keep the weight off. Is that from a simplistic understanding, you do want to be in a calorie deficit. That means that you are slightly below your maintenance calories. But first, you got to count, calculate your maintenance calories. After you've calculated your maintenance calories, then you can start off by subtracting your calories to start by 500 per day. And that'd be a good starting point for you to get to about 3,500 calories calories per week, which is how much one pound of body fat weighs, right? So typically you want to go in a calorie deficit. Now the other way, if you're in a caloric surplus, then you're setting yourself up to gain weight and that could be the reason why you're not burning stubborn body fat. Now the other thing I want to say is if you're somebody, and let's, find, let's say for example you find out that your calories are already crazy low, like your calories might be at 600 for example, then where do you go in order to slice that off some more? So you might be in a point where your calories are way below maintenance already. In which case, you don't want to slice them anymore because at some point, you're going to get down to zero. But if you get to yourself to a point where your calorie, you find out your calories are way too low, then you got to reverse diet. Reverse dieting is when you slowly increase your calories back up to maintenance. And once your calories are at maintenance, then you want to stay there and focus on building muscle first to ramp your metabolism back up. Then you can go into a deficit after that. But there's no point in continually slicing your calories into nothing because all you're going to do is slow down thyroid, func uh, thyroid function, lower your ener body's energy levels, slow down your body's ability to actually build muscle, which is the most metabolic thing on your body to help you burn body fat as well. As a side note, I wanna say in order for you to start to increase your calories, you'll likely need to also increase your carbohydrates. Now obviously as diabetics, when we increase our carbohydrates, you need to have a certain level of confidence to do that without worrying about blood sugar lows and blood sugar highs. Now this comes in, what comes into factor with this is really narrowing in on that insulin to carb ratio. I have a video that explains how to find your insulin to carb ratio below, but you want to make sure that you have confidence in that insulin to carb ratio, so that way when you incrementally start to increase your carbohydrates, you can do that with confidence and give yourself bolus shots and insulin shots with confidence, right? Of course, we're not always going to win 10 times out of 10, but, but if you understand more or less your insulin to carb ratio, you can increase that win percentage to 80%, 90%, right? And so that's what you need to focus on, then you can gain more confidence. Now remember, if you're trying to still find that insulin to carb ratio, don't test anything late at night before you go to bed because obviously you might wind up in a situation where the blood sugar goes low. So always test if you're testing your insulin to carb ratio in the day when you're awake, people are around, they know what's up and you can feel it if it goes low. Then you can gain confidence over time with increasing those carbohydrates along with the calories to help you get back to maintenance so to allow yourself uh, a place to build muscle before you go into the deficit. The second thing is that you have not prioritized muscle building. Muscle is the most metabolically active thing on the body. And as diabetics, we need to focus more on how do we preserve muscle and how do we build muscle. Because as diabetics, more susceptible to muscle wasting due to high and low blood sugars that can happen sometimes and low insulin levels. As diabetics, we're nervous or concerned or uncertain sometimes when it comes to bringing in carbohydrates. And as a result, we also don't have as much insulin on board. If you don't have as much insulin on board, it's going to be a lot harder for your body to really absorb the carbohydrates and the glucose that your body needs to really fuel your workout and take your training to the next level. If you think about it like 
this, the second system, I talk about this a lot, is called your glycolytic system. Glycolytic standing for glycolysis, standing for the breakdown of carbohydrates, right? So if you don't have carbohydrates on board, your body's gonna start tapping into amino acids and muscle tissue, which can also lower your overall metabolism to help you burn body fat. And again, remember, as diabetics, sometimes we have that fear of, of bringing carbohydrates into our diet. And so if that's the case, then we're, we're not maximizing that second system of the glycolytic system as extremely important to helping us preserve muscle and build muscle. So focusing on things like strength training workouts, about eight to 12 reps to keep it simple, and pushing yourself until failure with your workouts to focus more on bodybuilding to build muscle to ramp that metabolism up and build muscle tissue to help you burn more body fat. The third thing is you're not prioritizing protein. Protein is extremely important for your body. Study after study, result after result, shows that most people that get results when it comes to burning body fat have a protein level that makes sense, has a protein level of about one gram per pound of body weight is ideal because the more protein you have on board, the more fat you're gonna burn at rest because it just helps to ramp your body's metabolism up due to what's called the thermic effect of food. The thermic effect of food means that when you're taking in something like protein, it's gonna take more energy and calories to break down that protein than something like fat or simple carbohydrates. So when you focus on getting protein in, you're gonna ramp your metabolism up naturally due to how much energy it takes to break down that protein. On top of it, again, us being diabetics, we wanna preserve and build muscle tissue, then when we have amino acids on board, that's what's gonna help us, amino acids from protein, is what's gonna help us to repair those damaged muscle cells to help you build muscle, which goes into our point number two, and then overall help you ramp up your body's metabolism to burn more body fat as well. And if you're overweight, you can also go to about 0.6 to 0.8 grams per pound of body weight to start and then slowly increase that as you go along. As you drop some weight, you can keep increasing that uh, to help you ramp your metabolism up.